I'm Elena. In this video, I'd like to help you plan your trip to Hong Kong with suggestions of things to see and do and some helpful tips which you tend to discover at the end of your trip and then wish you'd known right from the beginning. You probably wouldn't guess from looking at me, but I was born in Hong Kong and have been back several times since I left. So I thought I'd share with you my knowledge of my favorite country in the world. Let's get started. An absolute must do is a visit to the Big Buddha on Lantau Island. To get there, take the Tung Chung MTR line from Central all the way to Tung Chung. You can either take the famous Nongping 360 cable car from there to the Buddha, or if you're afraid of heights, or the cable car has broken down like it had when we went, you can take the number 23 bus. Either way, you will end up at the Nongping village, which has little shops, places to eat, and other amusements. A little known fact is that if you eat at some of the restaurants in the village, you can take the receipt to the Walking with Buddha ticketing office and exchange it for a one-way MTR ticket per person eating, so definitely take advantage of that. The walk to the Buddha is not long from there, but there are a lot of steps, 268 in fact. But once you're at the top, you can get really spectacular views over Lantau. It will cost you extra to walk up inside the Buddha to the top viewing platform, but the views are not really that different from the platform below. Note that you cannot take photos when you're inside the Buddha. Below the Buddha is the Polin Monastery. It's incredibly beautiful, and you will see quite a few monks as you look around. You can even have a vegetarian lunch there for a small fee, the same food as the monks eat. There are certain areas there as well which you are not allowed to take photos in. An alternative route back to Hong Kong is to take the number 2 bus down to Mui Wo. That way you can see a different view of Hong Kong. For Disneyland Hong Kong, take the Chung Chung line on the MTR from Central and get out at Sunny Bay. Then take the Disneyland train, which is going to be really easy to spot. If you're a fan of Disney, like my friend Lucy, have small children or a lot of spare time on your holiday, then you should definitely check it out. It's a much smaller Disney theme park compared to all of the other ones around the world, which makes it very manageable for parents. All the rides are geared towards small children, so don't go there expecting a lot of roller coasters. In fact, there's really only one. That's not to say that you won't have a good time though, because Disneyland is always fun. The midday parade is particularly fantastic and changes all the time to show people something new. Unless it's a very busy holiday season, you shouldn't need to find a good spot hours before the parade. My friend and I went in February and we sat down about 20 minutes before it actually started and still got right to the front. I really liked the music, in fact I tried to buy the CD but unfortunately they don't sell it. It was probably my favourite part of the theme park. The performances are also really great. My tip for the Lion King show is to sit as near to the front as possible, or to the sides. You'll get a great view from any seat in the arena, I promise. But the actors and dancers will come and high-five the people in the front row and to the sides throughout the show, which is really great if you have small children. We'll definitely stay for the fireworks at the end. I've always found them really spectacular. If Disney isn't your thing, or you'd like some better rides, then Ocean Park is definitely the place for you. Ocean Park is split into two. The rides are at the top of the mountain, and almost everything else is at the bottom. The aquarium is fantastic. I particularly like being able to go through the tunnels, where you can watch the fish and the sharks from below. There's also a panda enclosure, where I feel like I could stand watching them for hours, although the regular panda sometimes doesn't exactly move a whole lot. To reach the roller coasters, you can take the cable car or the train. My favourite is the cable car because it's really beautiful and a nice slow ride. There are quite a few roller coasters. And there are also fairground games and a sea life show which happens frequently throughout the day. 
Like Disney, this park is great if you have small children, but it also appeals to the teenagers as well, more than Disneyland does. If you're in Hong Kong, you have to go to the peak, which is one of the highest points on Hong Kong Island. Take the tram to the top. It's really steep and it's definitely an experience. There are also some walks you can go on if you're feeling up to it. On the way back down, you'll be facing backwards, so if you want, you can take the bus or a taxi down instead. This was when we went on a particularly misty day. I particularly like to have dinner up there, because the skyline is so beautiful at night. If you get out at the peak tram station at the top, turn left and keep walking along the path until you reach the viewing platform. This is where you can get all of the best views. My advice would be to make the decision to go to the peak on the day, because you're going to need to see what the weather is like. This is Hong Kong. So the air pollution is really visible some days, and not on others. You might also want to avoid the weekends, as it can be incredibly busy with tourists. Finally, for teenage girls, you may have heard of the Chinese, Japanese and Korean trend of sticker booths. They are a lot of fun, I really like them, and the best place to find them is actually at the World Trade Center on the island. It's full of arcade games as well, so you can always bring guys along with you. Be mindful that some of the booths are in Japanese, but there are also some in English. In part 4, I will be talking about a few of my favourite restaurants in Hong Kong, as well as a few more suggestions of things to do while you're there. You can click on the link to go to the next video, or to go back to parts 1 and 2, and leave any questions in the comment section below.